Behold, one of the most important videos in this series, and that is your introduction to Use Effect. If you followed the series from the beginning, great, but I assume many of you have not been following from the beginning because your first time learning Use Effect was a little confusing, you did a little searching on the internet, and now you're here. That's fine because we're actually going to be starting kind of a new little application, so you can follow along with this video just fine. Now it might not look exactly the same because we're using the template from the previous videos, but all the concepts in this video are going to be fresh. Put simply, Use Effect allows us to have some section of code that will execute anytime our state changes. In addition, it'll run after the page is initially loaded. So once at the beginning and then any time the state changes. We can be a little bit more strict about when this code should execute so it doesn't have to execute all of the time and we're going to learn about those options in this video. I think when I learned use effect for the first time, I was confused mainly because of the name. Like what, what's an effect? What does use effect mean? And you can think of the name quite literally. Think of a side effect this is something that happens when you do something else. So when you change the state of the application, we have side effects that are executed, and to do that, we use the use effect hook. So when you do things, side effects happen, right? If you are in class, you punch your teacher in the face, there's a good chance you're not going to pass that class. Or, you know, you take some drug, you may have side effects. So you take a drug for heartburn, but side effects may include abdominal pain, headaches, or heartburn, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, organs spontaneously exploding, lizard skin, laser eyes, laser toes, allergic reactions to oxygen, and death. Coming from the React documentation, mutation subscriptions, timers, logging, and other side effects are not allowed inside the main body of a function component. Retur returned. <laughs> referred to as React's render phase. Doing so will lead to confusing bugs and inconsistencies in the UI. So what that means is all of these things, we need a place to put them since they can't go inside of our function directly. That's where use effect comes in. Use effect fires after layout and paint during a deferred event. So after the page is loaded, this makes it suitable for the many common side effects like setting up subscriptions and event handlers because most types of work shouldn't block the browser from updating the screen. A bunch of words to describe that use effect allows us to execute some code after the page is loaded. And this code is not going to go in line directly inside of our function component. Instead, we're going to move it over to use effect. Now let's talk about how to actually set up use effect. What does the code look like? And if those words didn't really make sense, we're gonna go through some examples to make it more concrete. So we're going to start with a fresh component. We've worked on some of these other components, but we're just going to create a new one because I want to work on a new type of application that's kind of irrelevant for the employees or the customers. So we're just going to create a little dictionary app. So we'll call it dictionary.js. And we're going to say export default function dictionary. And we're going to keep this pretty simple. What I want to do is I just want to have a state variable and then we're going to take that value from input and display it on the page. So imagine you're typing in some search word and then the search we type shows up on the page somewhere. So to use state, we're going to create an import, import use state from react. And then let's create that const here. So word and then set word. So that's the word we're trying to get a definition for. And then that'll say use state. So anytime we want this value to show up on the page and to be dynamic, we're going to want to put it in a state variable like so. Now let's display it on the page. So we will say return, we'll create a fragment. And inside of here, we're going to have an input. So input type is text. And then on change is where we're going to tell it to update the state variable. So we'll just leave that like that for now. And then we will close the input. We'll fill that in in just a second. Let's just go ahead and create the text. So we will create an H1 or whatever you want. And we'll just say something like let's get the definition for word. All right, now let's update the state. So we will just create an arrow function here. So the parameters, which we'll call E for event, and then the arrow, and then the curly braces, which is where we define what happens. We'll say set word. And the way we get what we typed in is E.target.value, and that should do the trick. So pretty simple page. 
now we just need to set it up so that we can visit this page. So for me and my application, I'm going to go over to app.js and add a new route for this. So route path is equal to slash dictionary. And the element we want to render is going to be the dictionary, which we want to put in lesser than greater than sign. So dictionary looks like it imported it for us. And then last thing I want to do is I actually want to make a link to this in my header so it shows up. So we're going to go over to header.js and just change some of our links here. So we'll change this one to dictionary and this is going to point to slash dictionary. Perfect, that should be everything. So let's go back to our site, take a look. This updated a dictionary. Uh, what's a really complicated word we can get the definition for? Oh, maybe something like subscribe. Yeah, that's nice. So definitely look up what that means and do it. So now let's talk about use effect. For this, we're going to inspect and we want to confirm that something happens in the terminal every single time the state changes. So for now we're just going to console log, but later you can do more advanced things. So let's head over back to our code. We're going to go into dictionary, and now let's add use effect. So it's actually gonna come from React 2, so we can just put a comma here, use effect. And this is a function, and the way you use this is going to be different than use state, so we're not going to assign to variables. We're just going to invoke the function like so. And this function takes two arguments, or one. The second one is optional, and we're going to talk about when you want to use it. So let's just start with the first argument, which is actually a callback function. So a callback function is a function passed into another function. So you can just do an arrow function and define it right here. So parentheses, arrow, curly braces. And then inside of the curly braces, we're going to say console log state updated and for fun we can display the state variable that we have all right let's check out our site and at this point let's do a refresh the value is currently undefined we can give it a default value whatever you put in here is the default so for example if we said help well that's going to show up by default let's just go ahead and use an empty string for now and now anytime we type in here the state updated is printed to the console. This should happen even if the state is not being displayed on the page. So for example, if we went back and we just removed this for a second, well, now even when I change the value here, it's still printing in the console. So let's go ahead and put that back. Now again, use effect should execute once on page load and then once for each change in state but you'll notice there's two here. And I believe this is directly related to strict mode, which is defined inside of index.js. So if you have strict mode enabled, there's a good chance you're going to see that twice on the initial load. So let me change that and refresh. And you can see we now only see it show up once. So strict mode will render your components twice and do some kind of magic to check for any kind of issues. So I'm just going to put that back as it was. It's not hurting anything. Just know that in development, you're going to see that on here twice. Coming from the documentation, strict mode can't automatically detect side effects for you, but it can help you spot them by making them a little more deterministic. Deterministic meaning that given the same input, the same results happen, which is an attribute we want to have for our code. So that is why it executes twice, but that shouldn't happen in production. So it's okay to leave that and just have it execute twice in development. Now I want to talk about how this is different than an event handler where sometimes you can do the same thing. So in our code, let's go back to dictionary JS. So inside of use effect, I'm going to take this console log and I'm going to cut it and I'm going to move it down here after set word and we save. And let's take a look at the console now. It's going to be pretty similar, but it'll be a bit different. So we type in Caleb and it says state updated Kale. First off, we didn't get that initial one on page load. There's nothing there. And it seems like the state is one character behind. So what's going on? Well, it's important to note that 
these set functions are asynchronous, so they're not guaranteed to have that value immediately after. On the other hand, use effect will depend on all of the state currently, and we can be sure that the state is updated as this executes after the state is updated. So it makes more sense to move this console log up into this use effect. And in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can limit what state use effect cares about. And this is done with the dependency array, which is the second argument we pass in. And that's just because we have already talked about quite a bit in this video. And I also wanted to mention one more thing, which is the importance of where use effect is defined. So we want it to be within our functional component. So make sure you define it inside of these curly braces and not outside. Secondly, I like to define it after any state. And this has to do with the dependencies as well as if this depends on any state, we wanna make sure we have those values defined in our code. And we're going to elaborate on this in the next video. If we place this here and pass in a second argument, which is an array, and we put our word variable here, going over to our code, we're going to get an error in the console because word has not been initialized. So if you just want to avoid that error always, then all you have to do is just take this code and just make sure you define it after any state. Now you'll never run into that problem. So if that was confusing and you weren't really sure what we were doing with that array, well, that's what we're gonna be talking about next. So make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. Once we have a good understanding of the dependency array, we'll be able to use use effect to do our initial fetches for our page. So that way we can grab information from a backend API and display it in our web page. So we'll be going through that in the upcoming episodes. So stay tuned. I'm getting pretty excited because we are starting to see things come together and we're able to make some more interactive web pages. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.